In today's video, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but the tropics are looking even more active than they were yesterday. As you can see, we now have three active named storms with a fourth one likely on the way with Tropical Depression 9 developed there in the Gulf of Mexico, potentially even a fifth there with that wave coming off of Africa. So there is a ton to talk about in the tropics. So we're going to be going over that. And as always, of course, we're going to be going over the upcoming pattern overall according to the storminess, total precipitation, temperature pattern. We're going to be rolling through all of it. So I'm looking forward to this video. I hope you guys are as well. Before we get into things, be sure to check out Prestige Weather in the description and pinned comment down below where we do weekly consulting. We do consulting updates as well in our community, written posts, things like that for all the different regions in the United States. So we have all sorts of stuff going on over there as well as early releases of our annual and seasonal updates over there. So very exciting stuff. Be sure to check it out in the description and pinned comment down below. Let's get into things though. And we're not going to go over any of the named storms here because there's not much to see here. But we will go over this one where we do have a 40% chance of development over the next 48 hours and increased all the way up to a 70% chance over the next seven days. Highly, highly likely that we do see this one develop eventually as well. So definitely a very, very interesting situation here where potentially we will end up having five named storms. Now, let's go over all the cone forecasts here for all of these. First things first, Tropical Storm Franklin here in the Southern Caribbean. Expected to take an almost directly northward and then almost northeastward trajectory here, northward into Dominican Republic. There is a tropical storm. And then upgrading likely to a hurricane in the middle of the Atlantic there as it sort of approaches Bermuda. So we're going to be on pretty high alert there for Bermuda for this one to develop. The east coast is a bit of a question mark. There is the case for this one to curve inward a little bit. So we'll be watching this one extremely closely. And really this one has the highest potential to develop into the strongest storm as of now. As we move on to trop uh, potential tropical cyclone nine here, uh, we can see that this one is expected. I guess it's not a trop. It should be a tropical depression. So uh, maybe, I don't know, but it's at 35 miles per hour already, only needs another five to be a tropical storm. So definitely looking like this one will be a tropical storm before impact in very, very far Southern Texas there uh, by 7 a.m. tomorrow. As you can see, it should be making landfall there with, again, the very further south areas of the Texas coast, and then it will obviously weaken afterwards. For tropical storm Gert here, we can see this one is expected to pretty much weaken and diminish before it ever reaches the Caribbean. So we are going to see this one die down, but it did get us further into the named storms. And if you watched yesterday's video, you remember me saying, I think this one does have some potential to reach that tropical storm status. Sure enough, it did end up doing that. It was extremely close. It's at 40 miles per hour right now. Definitely a very, very weak tropical storm, but it did get there. Now for Post-tropical cyclone Emily, this one is expected to remain at kind of that tropical depression strength. We do have 35 mile per hour sustained wind, so there's always the chance this one comes back up to a tropical storm. It is at that sort of intensity where there is always the chance. It is expected to curve very far to the north, very far to the east of Bermuda, and basically pose no risk for any land. Now, post, let me get this up here. That should be the right place, let's see. Yeah, that should work. Post-tropical cyclone Hillary is in Nevada and basically expected to remain more of like a tropical depression strength as it reaches the far southeastward uh, areas in Oregon. Definitely been an impactful storm and a historic storm for California. And this will probably be our last update for this particular storm. Now, as we go ahead and take a look at the upcoming pattern, we can see that that precipitation from Hillary is gonna remain in the West for a little bit here. As you can see, multiple different states dealing with this. In the East, however, we don't really have too much going on. Let's just keep going with this. And as you can see by Tuesday, the 22nd here, we still see very dry conditions for basically most of the Central and Eastern states, just like that. Uh, and then we see a lot of the West is dealing with tons of storminess. Same story down here in Texas from that tropical storm down there. Going to bring some storminess as well. So that is the story here. For the beginning of the week, 
by the time we reach Wednesday, the 23rd here, we can see lots and lots of storms that we're dealing with for the Northwest down through the Rockies. So we're gonna continue to see some storminess lingering, although it has diminished a little bit here. Still relatively quiet for a lot of the East until the later portion of the week. As you can see, by the time we reach Thursday, we will begin to see some chances at some scattered thunderstorms here for a lot of the Ohio Valley, the Mid-Atlantic, and the Northeast here. For the four corner states and surrounding states, we do have some thunderstorms prevailing as well. So we have that going on on Thursday. Friday, relatively quiet outside of the Northeast here where we do have these storms kind of lingering still. Some of the plains through the Northwest here, we're seeing a lot of these storms prevailing out there also. Um, but for probably 70% of the nation, not a whole lot going on. Saturday the 26th here, we could see that the east, especially the northeast and mid-Atlantic, remains very stormy. So we see this still ongoing. And then we could see for a lot of the Rockies down through the upper Midwest, we're seeing some storms also. Uh, now for Sunday the 27th here, uh, even quieter. We do have this area of storms here through the central regions. Some very isolated storms happening for a lot of the northeast, mid-Atlantic, and some of that southeast coast but overall a quieter day. Monday, hardly even worth mentioning, besides this tropical system that we do see very concerningly close to the eastern seaboard. Let's see what happens with that one. Doesn't really look to make landfall at all, uh, but we do see that we begin to get some tropical moisture at least moving into the eastern states, and this will kind of spark back up a lot of that thunderstorm activity. Also, just like we've been seeing, a couple of lows to the north stretching down, causing some thunderstorms here in the Midwest. If all of this kind of comes together, we could see a busier pattern begin in the east in the kind of near term for the beginning of September, end of August timeframe. But for now, as you can kind of tell, quieter pattern is gonna prevail. And just because of that, we really don't have that many uh, widespread areas of above average activity. We're seeing some of it in the areas I'm circling in here, but not too much upper Midwest into the kind of mid-Atlantic Northeast area, some of this for New England. So there's just these multiple scattered about spots dealing with some above average activity, but nothing like we've been seeing with very, very widespread swaths of it, uh, much quieter here in this case. So definitely an interesting pattern. Again, quieter, I think is the trend here. We can see that this warm up for the East has begun and we do see this more negative PNA look out West. You see something like this, and this causes a surging warmth to take place for a lot of the central and eastern states. So that is what we're seeing here. Let's keep going. As you can see, the warmth prevails until about the 28th time frame here. And this is when we see a warming trend back out west. I always talk about how this is what dictates everything, the west. And sure enough, in this case, we see the warming in the west. And instantly, almost, we see cooling begin to take place here for a lot of the central and eastern states. Let's keep going, keep going, keep going. And we can see that overall a cooler pattern does mostly uh, take over for the beginning of September, or kind of like later August timeframe. We do see this trend of warming for the first week of September. And again, I'm gonna point it out, but you might've noticed already, but look at how the West cooled down and we instantly saw this warmth surge. So just as I've stated multiple times, the West is what's in the driver's seat basically for what kind of pattern we see for all of the lower 48. Really, really interesting how that's dictated the pattern. Anyway, be sure to subscribe. We do upload videos just like this one every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.